Hey everybody, this is Brenda. I'm going to do a little video and interview with Jeffrey Miller today of EnergyBatLabs.com and we're going to go through and get a tour of his lab. Here we go. Hello, my name is Jeffrey Miller. I've been uh, experimenting since I was about five years old. This is my helper right here. He came down from a UFO ship and that's where I got all my knowledge. So, that being said, I'd like to give you a tour of the whole lab. Uh, I've been uh, developing it since I was about five years old. I started at Franklin Institute in Philadelphia, read millions of books, and here I am later, 65, sitting here with all this knowledge, and we're slowly maybe getting evicted from the lab. And at the same time, uh, this stuff is available for sale, or it may go into the trash. I don't know at this point. So let's go along and I'll show you what I have in the lab. So over here, um, we'll start and we'll go around the lab and come back through here. So what we have here is we have a water turbine. It's called a CQ. It stands for Centrifugal Energy Amplification Conversion Unit. This is a big unit. It is run by a turbine that's inside here. It circulates the water up through here through a pump. It has one generator that runs the pump, and then it has a master generator that you take all your energy off of. And so that's what this whole invention is. So that takes care of the water uh, stuff, and it's unbelievable. So here it is. Is that based on some inventor's project in the past? Yes, that's uh, the person who developed it. The original idea was his name was Don Watts. He died of cancer. He lived in uh, Nevada. Uh, and I <clears throat> talked to him and I started that project about 45 years ago in my friend's uh, place, Nancy's. So then we go over here and these are my guard dogs right here, Ralph and Junior, and they watch out for everything. So since it's called Energy Bat Labs, we have to have a bat. So that's the bat that takes care of everything, cleans up. That's what bats do. So at the same time, we have a Newman motor here. This Newman motor is basically 10,000 pounds. And the inventor, the original inventor was Joseph Newman back in the day. And what he invented was a motor that ended up using no amperage to run it. And it all runs on voltage. So what it has here, is if you come over here and you look in the mirror there, you'll be able to see the magnet. And the magnet turns, and this is a gigantic coil. So this coil basically weighs about 8,000 pounds. And then there's about 2,000 pounds of uh, actual wood, metal, steel, everything like that. So is the magnet the red thing? Yes. That's the North Pole. And then there's another one on the other side, South Pole. So then... <clears throat> Right now, it's set up in generator mode, and so you basically have the motor, you turn it on, and then once you go ahead and turn it on, then it can be switched over to run all by itself with the other motor, and we're lacking diodes right now, but there's, there are a million ways that you can run this, and we'll get back to this and be able to show it. How long did it take you to wrap the coil that's in there. Nancy and I took a year walking around and each set of coils that went in there was number um, four wire, 19 uh, strands per wire for the power coil. And there were, uh, I think 160, uh, no, there were uh, 60 coils of 160 pounds each. Then we had the generator coil that went around it on, after we did that, and that's the generator coil that's wrapped around the power coil. That ended up being a total of 12 uh, number 20 gauge magnet wire, which is actually over here, if you can see it. That right there. That's your generator coil. And so there's thousands and thousands of feet wire on there and so this is the front of it over here 
and I can turn on the light. And what we have here is we have the batteries that are in front of it. The batteries actually run it when I run it in the motor mode. I put what's known as a commutator on here, it's a switch. And so then we hook it up to the batteries and then it runs and runs and runs. And so for this whole entire thing, it'll end up using about four watts of energy. And then you get basically, if you hook a solid generator to it and everything like that, you could hook up a 10,000 watt generator and everything like that. And the more voltage you put into it, the faster it goes, the more power you can pull off it. So. That's basically it. You can look up Joe's Newman anywhere on the internet. So over here, um, we have a load board that basically is a 200 amp load board. And the future of what the last experiments were to do was to hook the whole generator and the motor up to the load board and then run the load board like it would be equal to your house. And so that's a giant load board that I made years ago. So again, since it's a lab and I need material, over here behind me, uh, we have metal stock of everything we want. In the room over here, there's all kinds of electrical uh, equipment and batteries. And then behind you, you have a press, you have the workout bench, you have more equipment that's just used for what we needed at the time. Because one of the things I do in here is invent, so I'm able to sit there and go ahead and just grab anything I want and then go ahead and build anything I want. And so down here, um, this lab is on the floor space, it's 4,000 square feet. So over here, we have a sandblasting cabinet, we have drill presses, we've got more wood. Now, up here, are, in my old lab, it used to be a Tesla lab, and so that's Nikola Tesla, not Elon Tesla, not Elon Musk. Um, I have two coils here. They're transmitting coil and receiving coil. And what I was able to do is duplicate all Colorado experiments uh, that Nikolai Tesla did way back in the 1800s and everything out in Colorado. And so I was able to transmit electricity through the ground and everything like that. And they're a quarter scale of his original um, Colorado Springs uh, uh, coils. So they're just sitting there. So we've got more wood, sanders. We've got power um, uh, power devices. This thing right here is one of our chargers that we can charge up like a Tesla in about five minutes. And this right now puts out five, uh, what this one puts out 500 DC amps. And Tesla's right now uh, charge up at basically, I think, 80 amps and everything. So over here, we've got another sandblast cabinet. We've got more machinery. We've got a mill. Then over here, we've got a sander. And these two uh, devices are what's known as cromary devices. And what they're able to do is several things. But one of the things that they're able to do is that they can end up actually freezing a battery and... Um, the person that actually developed those original things was John Bedini. And John Bedini was an experimenter that passed away in 2016, I think. And so then we go ahead and we have another bandsaw. And what we have here, I put this up and it stays up. Uh, we have what's known as Paul Pantone's invention called the Geet Reactor. And it's a plasma inventor invention and what it basically does is you put gasoline in here you can add uh, water salt water coke cola it doesn't really matter and in the reaction tube which is running right here what do we i mean right here sorry uh what that ends up doing is it takes apart everything and then is able to go ahead put it into the engine 
efficiently and you have absolutely zero emissions out of the whole entire thing coming out of the actual exhaust pipe. And there's a tube inside of the tube? And there's a tube inside of the tube, which then there's a very special rod that goes inside of the center tube. So there's an outside tube, a middle tube, and then a center rod that's inside of it. So you can look him up on the internet too. But one of the things Energy Bat Labs does incredibly well is that I vet out these people's um, inventions. And so I've done it. I've done the work. These people have passed along. They're the original ideas and everything. And unfortunately, most original inventors, one of the main problems is, is that they end up dying, but they leave the idea. And I'm a type of person that understands the idea, tests the idea, and then the key thing is, is to be able to market it. I have two companies and we're working right now on marketing a battery technology that can basically give you an example, uh, uh, charge your uh, cell phone up in you know one second or charge uh, a complete car up in less than five minutes, electric vehicle. So anyway, back to the more junk stuff. So we've got like 20,000 pounds of uh, iron here. We've got more tools, drill press, band saws, we've got welders, we've got more band saws, we've got plasma cutters, we've got a um, electric furnace. And one of the things I do when, why everybody sort of looks like there's a lot of junk in here. Well, the key thing is, is inventing, you don't know what you need at the time. And so when you have all this stuff, I can just grab it in a second. And that's why I can make it. A lot of people, they go ahead and they use like uh, maker bots or they use uh, devices that will make um, plastic parts and everything like that, 3D printer. Well, that's fine if you can't do machinery. So then over here, we've got lathe um, and more stuff. So without the machinery, you can't make any of this stuff. So then back here, we saw the GEEP uh, reactor up here. One of the experiments that we're running is that we have a regular gasoline motor here. And so if we put in three ounces of gasoline and it runs for 15 minutes, let's say, and then we put three ounces of gasoline in the GEEP reactor, and then it runs for 45 or an hour you know, time, then you see advantages just with the gasoline alone. That doesn't include if you add water or any additives to it. So then we keep on going. Oh yeah, let's go this way. We keep going down here and we have more stuff and everything. And we have uh, generators. We've got, again, another CQ motor that was developed way back at about 40 years ago and everything is a test bed to see if it works. Then we've got just more stuff. Then I have an extensive library that I've been developing and I've had for the last like probably 50 years. Tons and tons of books, simply right there. We have a pump, we have a generator, we got light bulbs, then we have sound equipment here. So then we're going to go down what I call Fantasy Island. And the reason why I call it Fantasy Island is because there's certain devices down here that are my own devices that I've developed that have nothing to do with other people's inventions. And so if Brenda comes down here, oh, by the way, one of the um, ideas that I developed years ago was called the pullout. And so if you look here, there's six pictures, picture one. The pullout is a mobile utility toolbox that goes inside of a truck. When you pull the whole thing out, it's a complete shop on wheels. And so I hold about 12 patents on that. So then we go down here and we have light bulbs. These are the actual light bulbs here uh, that I ended up using when I used to test the Tesla coils and Colorado Springs stuff. I was able to light them all up and everything. Another thing that I do in my lab is I completely film everything and I take pictures of every single day that I do my work in here. So I have like almost 80, 90 hard drives that are just filled up 
with every single thing that I do. So if I do a build, then you will see it from the very beginning to the end. Because most inventors just usually write down notes or something like that. And I don't really do that because if you see the video and how to put it together, then you can build it yourself. So again, another primary generator, induction coil. Uh, let me see what else. Do you have a YouTube page with all your videos? <laughs> no, I. you can go to um, energybat.com and I have my website there because the reason why I don't use the YouTube page is YouTube can take down videos. I have my own server that I have through another web guy. And so that's how we keep all our uh, stuff up live on, uh, you know, the internet. But you can go to, like, again, energybat.com uh, and you can see everything up there. Anyway, this is an original device that John Bedini did. It is the original um, idea that he ended up doing when he made what's known as the Bedini wheel, the SG, everything like that. He made this way back in 19, um, 1984. So then you got chemical stuff, you got radiation detector meter. You've got, uh, this is the commutator. Actually, this is the wire that's wrapped on the Newman motor. And Number four, 19 strands inside there. It was a bitch putting it. And this is the generator coil that goes on there, number 20. And that right here is a commutator that goes on to the actual um, uni itself. And so then you've got more stuff, battery chargers, more <laughs> stuff and everything. And then we get to uh, like I said, I duplicate people's work. This is John Bedini's work, and I duplicated his original primary generator that he had a town hall meeting back in 1984 that he was able to light 6,000 watts worth of uh, light bulbs on a 48-stranded uh, wire. And to give you an idea what 48-stranded wire is, about as thin as your hair. So then over here, we've got all inventory, electrical inventory of about uh, 10 or 12 shelves filled with this stuff. And so this is all kinds of capacitors, you name it. These are my generators that I've made that nobody's ever seen yet. And they're all prototypes and everything like that. So one of the things that I've been able to do is I have all the knowledge, so technically, if this lab gets evicted and all this stuff gets thrown in the trash, that which I really hope it doesn't, there basically is about $2 million, if not more, of equipment, of electrical equipment you could not get anywhere in the world right now. Because most of the people don't even have it. The older people, you know, the stuff has been chucked away. Everything. So I've got shelves and shelves and shelves of equipment you know, and uh, giant plastic ball. Uh, and the funny thing is, I haven't been down this aisle in about half a year, so to speak. Solar cells, everything. And so, all this was to go into a bigger lab once we got the money from the companies and everything for licensing our battery technology. And so that's what we're really waiting for because then what I was going to do is I was going to open up a free energy um, sort of lab so that I could teach younger people about this technology, you know, because eventually you're going to need it. You know, the grid cannot hold the electrical stuff. And I have a friend right now that's building. He's in the process of getting so that you can build. They're going to try and build uh, four nuclear uh, sites in the United States, which is actually being backed somewhat by the electric vehicle uh, corporations. So anyway, then we have, you know, drawers and drawers of stuff, bolts, everything. And so from an efficient point of view, I can just go ahead and grab whatever I want. And believe it or not, I know about 99% of what's in this lab. 
Once in a while, I gotta hunt for it. But that's sort of like fun because it's like an Easter egg hunt. Looking for Easter eggs with little magic things in it. So anyway, um, we go over here and we've got tile saw. Like I said, without the tools, you can't build anything. You know, so we've got more drawers, more drawers, you know. This unit over here is a special generator and everything. It works on flywheel design and stuff that I've made. Um, over here, there's more stuff. This is all electrical stuff. So if I need like light bulbs, I just grab a light bulb, it burns out, go grab another one. It's one of the things about R&D stands for <laughs> research and destroy because development comes from when you blow things up. But I'm, I'm pretty good at not doing that. Um, we have what's known here. A guy invented this. His name is Mike Waters. It's a Mike Waters turbine and everything, wind turbine. And it's the best in the world. Nothing will beat it. And so um, I've tested it. It's up at my website. And so again, uh, we've got a battery charger. We've got um, a... Uh, another motor generator because what I've done is you test these motor generator type things so that you can get the efficiency and what you want is you want to have the efficiency so that when you put the power in you get excess power out and the only reason why you can do that is that you change what the actual unit will look like you're not changing any physical laws you're just adapting how to put certain parts certain to, together to yield different results. So when I explain that to people, and people say, well, that can't be done. Well, yeah, it's done all the time. If you have a Ford F-150 and you have a Ferrari and you want to make a Ferrari out of the Ford F-150, well, all you got to do is crush it all down, melt the metal, and then you'll be able to go ahead and, you know, build one up out of that metal. And that's sort of what I do is that I'm able to restructure it in a completely different configuration to be able to yield different results. That's basically it. So anyway, so then what we'll do is we'll go back here, we'll turn on the light. Uh, one of the things my ultimate goal was in doing all this research is the fact that <clears throat> If you look on the ground here, I have a big, long, like 20 feet of dirt and metal plates. And this dirt and metal plates here is a test bed for being able to get electricity out of the ground. And so we basically live on a big, giant potato. And if you know how to get the magnetic um, energy and telluric currents out of the uh, ground and turn it into what I call artificial electricity, which is 60 cycles or DC, then you'll be able to power stuff. And so one of the two things I learned when I was a little kid is get the power out of the ground and also at the same time get the power transmitted. So the only way electric vehicles are really going to work is when you're able to transmit the electricity into the car. They have a receiver, and that's what Tesla did. He had a car that did the exact same thing. And so if you truly read some of the key books that he got together, you could understand that. Anyway, more batteries... More coils, this is usually a coil winding station when it's clear, you know. And so, then with this, uh, with our battery testing and everything like that, I've tested every single type of battery charger on the planet practically. And so basically what our battery charger is able to do is against any other battery charger, is if you take a battery charger and you charge up battery and it takes, let's say 12 hours, we can set the set point to do it in an hour. We can set the set point to do it in a half hour. We can set the set point to do it in 15 minutes. It's all the ability of being able to put the energy into the battery. And the battery basically becomes uh, a zero resistance battery, almost super conductive when we put the energy in. But uh, you can actually read about our technology on the website, energybat.com. It's up there. So anyway. We have more shelves with, uh, as I call it, more booty, you know. And so with all these shelves, again, more electrical inventory all over the place. It's extensive because I've built it up over the years. 
And one of the key things about the lab is that um, I've been able to know where to get the electrical inventory and everything like that. And so over here, for some of the Tesla experiments and everything, we were using gigantic uh, uh, trans <clears throat> transformers. And so these things are put out like 30 kV and everything, 220. And they're usually, you know, used in the electrical uh, grid and everything. And so I just like, you know, got a few. Anyway, like over here, we have what's known as on these two boards here, there's known as uh, Don Smith's work and everything. And if you understand anything about that inventor, basically he was able to make sort of a small version of what uh, Tesla was able to put together and transmit it into the ground. And he's just made a small version of it. And this is somebody that duplicated it and then I modified some stuff. And so you could take this board outside, put it into the ground, put it into the air, get the potential difference with it, and then be able to actually get uh, electrical energy out of it for uses. So the key thing is now, where I'm at with projects like this is to be able to put them on a small scale and sort of a little box. So anyway, over here, we've got drawers and drawers of the pullout. And so these pullouts are way back in 1990 and everything. They were developed so that you could put anything on and off of the actual um, pickup truck in the world. So this one just happens to be a tool pullout. You could actually have these things for, you know, paramedics. You could have them as um, uh, catering, whatever you can envision putting into a box and putting it right there. And so the reason why it never took off is that we were supposed to go in Home Depot. And then when Lehman Brothers uh, crashed in 2009-10, uh, that ended it for the million dollar investor that was supposed to put the money in on the pullout itself. So we've got various models and we have, you know, just all this was drawn up years and years ago. And if anybody wants to do it, I have the ability to, you know, just hand them a, a flash drive and they're able to sit there and uh, go make this thing themselves. Yeah, uh, maybe we'll make some money. So anyway, more so back here, we have more stuff. <laughs> more electrical inventory, um, all back here. The main two key, very expensive electrical inventory things is this whole thing is filled with probably about 3,000 pounds of every magnetic wire that you can imagine. At the same time, over here, we've got thousands and thousands of dollars um, of magnets over there and there every configuration of magnet. So when I need a magnet, I just go back here and grab it, you know? And so at the same time, um, we've got our old test boards for chargers all right here and everything. Um, and at the same time over here, we've got tons and tons of wires and cables. Um, Especially that black wire right there was used for the Tesla transmitting uh, stuff all through the ground. And so, more and more wire, you know. And then over here, we've got like this scale. This scale was used to get, use it as a pony brake scale for the Newman motor to actually get the actual um, load out of the torque load out of the actual uh, shaft of the motor and everything like that then we've got another generating system with a flywheel with a uh, 400 pound flywheel in that thing you've got the qeg here which was developed by uh this girl named hope girl and her father and they still may be working on it i don't know i've made it to work and do what it has to do you can probably go and look that up on the internet too then we have a over there, we've got two regular Tesla coils. And unfortunately, to give and make sure that people understand, the word Tesla coil is just a buzzword because what they really are is RF coils. And Tesla coil 
if you saw the original Tesla coils that Nikolai Tesla in the 1800s did, they don't look like anything like that. So anyway, so then over here, we have back here, we have a solar cell system. And the funny thing is right here, this whole solar cell system that I had, um, the day I moved in here, the second day, transformers blew up in the town that I was in. So I quickly made this all within about, uh, you know, three or four hours. And then I put an inverter, the battery, everything. And then I was able to have my light for what I needed to do. And then the landlord came in and he says, how do you have light? And I said, well, I've got this inverter thing here. So anyway, we've got a, um, a big 15,000 char 15, watt charger uh, that can charge up electric vehicles or whatever we want to charge up. That's right here. Then you have more batteries. These are the old batteries that I used to uh, use when um, I was doing the Newman coil. I mean the Newman motor way back when. So then we get over here and we have more electrical equipment and everything. Then we have a vice, we have batteries. Um, over here we have um, all my really good machinery tools that I need when I need them. Uh, over here we've got more electrical tools and everything like that. We've got all kinds of electrical tools in this uh, case. So then we get to uh, battery land. And here goes another Newman motor and everything, but I also used this motor, wasn't just a Newman motor, I also used it for the power that actually, it's a, it was made to go ahead and do the power for the transmitting into the coils that are behind me with the Nikolai Tesla coils, Colorado Springs. Because you need a generator and that's what I use it for. And I use it for many other tests and everything. And so then we have tons of batteries that we're able to test and stuff. Uh, one of the things that we can do with our battery technology is that we can actually uh, bring back dead batteries, simple as that, you know, as long as they're not physically, you know, banged up, you know. Then we have more tools, more tool, <laughs> more tool bench here. Then we have another set of batteries and everything. And like I said, in our battery charging and everything uh, for the technology, I've charged all the tech, all the batteries with all the, um, you know, battery brands. So, you know, I'll give you an example. Um, this, this battery right here, this actually goes into your Leaf electric vehicle. This is what's inside it. And so then you can't really see it here, but if Brenner zooms in, that, that's a Tesla pack. So they have 15 of those, basically with 500 um, uh, lithium ion batteries inside of it. Then these are all my meters, all kinds of meters in here. Then we go over here and again, another um, battery charger that we use and everything that we developed. And then at the same time, down here, we have uh, a small CQ prototype that we're testing and everything like that. And we're still testing that because that one, uh, it runs under pressure and a whole bunch of different things. Then we have another whole GEET system, Paul Pantone system there. It's sitting here. And then over here, we have a Bedini gigantic wheel and everything, another generating system, you know, more electrical equipment. And so we go around here and what we have here is we have what's known as a three battery system. And I actually uh, took this out to uh, one or two conferences out West. And what the three battery system does is when the batteries are in here, this was the first test bed. 
what it does is you have battery A, battery B, battery bank C, and then they rotate. And as long as you don't exceed the energy of either one of the battery uh, sets, then it'll pretty much run pretty much indefinitely. And the reason why I developed it was I developed it so that you wouldn't have to use solar. Because solar takes up a huge amount of real estate. So anyway, here's a bigger uh, set of it right here. And that basically uh, does the exact same thing. It's just a bigger you know, set. So then we have over here, we have our battery testing bed for small batteries, goes through a computer, goes through a battery analyzer, everything like that. And then we're able to get all the data off of that whole entire uh, you know, battery for whatever we need it for. So then after that, um, we've got more batteries, big gigantic uh, roll serrette batteries, which uh, then we can load down hugely and test more batteries. So we've been testing batteries forever. So over here in the back shelves and stuff like that, got another Siku turbine test bed, got more battery chargers. We've got another generator right there. Then over here, um, this was electrostatic experiments that I was doing with Wimhurst machines. We have another Bedini wheel over here. Then we come to um, right here. We've got more battery, batteries to test. And these batteries are actually pretty cool because you can drill a hole, hole through them. They've got a million, years, million cycle life to it. They won't explode, but they're very expensive and they're cutting edge. Then up here, about uh, 25 years ago, what I did is I got some Prius cutting edge batteries from the Prius. Uh, I had a friend that uh, was in a Prius company or whatever, and he sent me these batteries. And the reason why they weren't going to use them in the Prius, they were actually too good. They wanted to have a shorter lifespan. So these batteries I ended up putting in here, putting an inverter in it, and then have a solar cell. So then I can have a pack that you can walk around with and everything. So today, the people have gotten, they figured out how to do that a little bit. And you can buy uh, devices like that on, you know, Amazon and go in the mountains and have a little bit of electricity. So all these boxes here, I've started to pack up some of the key stuff if I have to get out of the lab. And so uh, to be really honest, I'm not happy about losing $2 million plus of equipment and losing all this. So if anybody out there that actually can help me, I would appreciate it. Over here, we have a special generator that I'm still building in here and our get out date if the guy, if the rent isn't paid, it's probably going to be August 15th. So this is a special generator that I'm making for myself. This is more battery testing, battery testing bench. And then this comes to a special generator that if I turn on the light, it'll look cool. And so let's go over here, turn on the light. And this is a special generator design built by somebody else. I can't go into it right now. But what happens is you'll be able to sit here and pull it and it will self run the motor and then run the light bulbs and everything like that. So right now we're right back to square one and upstairs I have a office, books, some computers, and then I have also a, a computer room with a whole bunch of stuff in there. So that's uh, pretty much a short version of Energy Bat Labs. So I hope you know you liked it. And uh, what I leave here with, if I lose the lab completely, I'll have the knowledge and I'm available, available for consulting. And so it's been horrend horrendous time in the last like week or two. And especially with some of my friends that have come here. So I want to give an unbelievable thank you to Brenda for actually doing this video. It's my so, pleasure. Thanks a lot. How can people get a hold of you and what's your website again? Uh, my website is energybat.com and you can email me at nt energybat or nt at energybat.com. 
and then all my my phone numbers up there and all the information that you'll need to know thank you okay